Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be making a ring out of a piece of mammoth tooth. This was sent to us by the Waterjet channel. If you haven't seen their video on it, I've got a link to it down in the description. It's pretty interesting. They start out with a whole big, huge mammoth tooth. So it's really cool to see. But in our video, we're going to be doing our best to make a ring out of this. And as you might imagine, mammoth tooth is pretty fragile. They've actually stabilized it with some resin. So that'll help us out a little bit, but it's still gonna have a few challenges that we're going to have to work around. We're mostly just gonna have to be pretty gentle with it. And so what I'm thinking we'll do is we'll use this carbon fiber here. We'll make a liner out of that. That way it'll make it a lot stronger. And then it'll kind of make it cool just because carbon fiber is a really cool material. I think the mammoth tooth will make for a very interesting looking ring, kind of intricate. It's got a whole bunch of different colors to it and they go in some pretty cool patterns. So I can't wait to get this thing finished. Our first step is going to be using a diamond coated hole saw to cut the hole out in the middle of this and then we'll be able to add the carbon fiber, reinforce it, all that. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started on the ring making, I just wanna give you guys a quick heads up. We are going to be doing a giveaway for one of these mammoth tooth rings. So there's going to be details for that at the end of the video, so stay tuned. So cutting the blank out turned out to be a lot more challenging than I expected it to be, and I seriously expected this to be hard. So this was a huge pain. This piece is big enough to get three pieces out of it, and I ruined two of them. And we were filming this at the last minute. We only had one day to get this done, and it was like 2 a.m., and so this was super stressful. And so we're just trying to figure out the best way to cut this. So I wanted to share all these failures with you because I think there's a lot to learn from it and it was such a huge relief to be able to overcome these challenges. So you'll notice I'm being pretty aggressive with the size of the blank that we have. The first two I attempted to make fairly thin so you'll see the difference between the inside diameter and the outside diameter. So that didn't leave enough structure intact for the mammoth tooth to hold up. So that was a big factor in what caused these to break. And there's also an issue of when you finally cut through the mammoth tooth and you can see I'm trying to solve this by doing it on this flat piece piece of cutting board here, but even that didn't work. The problem is that when you finally cut through the piece, it's kind of a pretty violent ripping that it does, and so that can mess things up, but it was still pretty problematic for me. So you'll see how I solve that when I'm cutting the third piece, but the third problem that I had, it was these clamps here. And you can see in some of the footage how they kind of like put too much strain on the piece and it kind of causes it to crack. And so I wanted to find a really even and consistent way to just hold this piece down without putting any pressure on it. So what I ended up doing is I literally just super glued this whole piece to this piece of wood here. And I knew I was creating quite the problem for myself because of the strategy I was going for, I was gonna have to tear this piece of wood apart and use several different methods to try to detach the blank, but I seriously had no options at this point. So that's what I went with. And then you'll see like I was talking about the way I avoided having the rough kind of tear out that I get is I literally just didn't even cut all the way through. So I stopped about two millimeters before cutting all the way through the mammoth tooth. And then I'm going to use a diamond cutting wheel on my Dremel. And that's a lot more gentle to the mammoth. So I cut it most of the way with the hole saws just to get rid of the bulk of the work. And then I just carve the rest of it out using the Dremel. So now we finally have a blank to go off. This seriously took about four hours to get to this point. So it was off to a really slow start, but thankfully the next step was to use carbon fiber. And it is a little bit tricky to work with, but I've been working with it for so long that it's pretty straightforward. I just cut out another blank using the diamond hole saws. And then I take the carbon fiber blank and I mount it on this expanding ring mandrel here. And for those of you wondering where you can get one of these mandrels, there's a link down to that in the description. That's just my supplies website. And the step we need to take here is just to slowly trim away the carbon fiber until it fits just barely inside of our hollowed out mammoth tooth. Now that we've got it the exact size we need, I'm taking it over to my arbor press 
and then I'm going to coat the entire outer surface of the carbon fiber in a medium viscosity CA adhesive, and then I carefully and as evenly as possible press the two together with the Arbor Press, and then once it's set into place, I spray it with some CA accelerator, and that just sets the CA glue instantly so that we're ready to get going with the next step. And this next step was really bad. It was even worse than cutting out the blank in the first place. So this is going to be sanding down the outer diameter of the ring. And because we had to leave this blank so thick, we've got a whole lot of material to sand through. And if you didn't know, Mammoth Tooth is not an easy material to sand away. And on top of that, it puts off an insane amount of dust. When you're sanding it, you're thinking you're getting a lot of progress just by how much dust is going off. And then you go and measure it and it's barely even changed. So it's kind of annoying. And if you can imagine, it smells like death. If you've ever got a filling at the dentist and you catch a whiff of the dust that comes off your teeth when they're sanding it, it smells terrible. And that's exactly what this smells like. So not only does it smell terrible, but it also brings back just awful memories at the dentist. So not a very fun time. And this took from start to finish, just this sanding step took over an hour. It was ridiculous. And I was going through sanding bits like crazy. But I eventually got it down to a diameter that was pretty close and now I need to bring out what's called a dial indicator. And the way the indicator works is it's got a very precise needle at the end of it and it measures how much in or out it is. And so you can see the dial, it shows you how many thousandths of an inch something is off. And so when I rotate it, I can see the differences in the diameter of the ring and I can see all the high and low points. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a Sharpie and I'm labeling all of those high points and then I sand it down with the Dremel and then I repeat the same process and I label the high points until I get to a point where I'm within about five thousandths of an inch. For a natural looking material like this, that's going to be more than plenty to make sure that there's no noticeable unevenness to the ring. Okay, now I've got it all evened out. We're ready to move on to some of the finishing steps. So I'll start with sanding and polishing the outside. I'm starting with a 220 grit sandpaper, and then I'm working my way up all the way to 1000 grit. And so I just go 220, 320, 400, 600, 800, 1000. And once it's at that point, it's got a pretty nice satiny finish to it, but it's not really polished or glossy or anything like that. And so that's what I'm using these two paper towel pieces for. One of them has a white medium polishing compound on it, and the other one has a green high polish on it. And so between those two steps, we're able to get a really nice glossy surface out of the ring. And I was actually amazed by how well the mammoth tooth can hold the polish. So now that we have a nice finish on the outside, it's time to take care of the inside. So I'm going to start with a rough Dremel bit and then hollow out the inside just a little bit more to get it to the size I want and then round those edges over. That way it's going to be more comfortable. And in most of my videos, I would do this step with the ring and the lathe jaws. I just did not want to risk crushing the ring at this point. That would have been terrible. And so I'm doing it all by hand. I can get the results to be just as good. It's just a lot harder and time consuming. So everything I do, I need to do by hand. So once I've got the shaping done with the rough Dremel, I switch over to the finer Dremel sandpaper, and this is a 320 grit. And then I just go over the whole inside of the ring, round everything off, make sure it's really smooth. And then after that, I actually ended up doing a little bit of sanding off camera. I did some 600 grit sandpaper by hand and then some 1000 grit, and I was able to smooth everything out and get it ready for polishing. And so for polishing, I'm just using a felt Dremel wheel, and I've got a medium finish on this Dremel wheel. I think that gives the carbon fiber a really nice look. So that's kind of my go-to finish for any of these carbon fiber liner drinks. And then at this point, I wanna give the outside an even more thorough polishing. We kind of roughed it up a little bit while I was polishing the inside of the ring, and the buffing wheels actually work a little bit better than those paper towels I was using earlier. And so I'm just starting on the left with the exact same process as earlier, but just using the wheel. So I use a white compound on the left, switch over to the right, and that's where I'm using this green compound. And so now the ring is done. This thing looks incredible. The mammoth tooth is so contrasty. It's got so many different cool colors to it. 
to it and a bunch of amazing patterns in it. It's super organic because it literally came from a living animal. So it's got a lot of cool detail, so much going on, and I really like the colors of it. It really pops, some really rich colors on there, some more natural earthy tones. It almost looks like wood on some parts of the ring. So that's the ring. I thought it turned out amazing. I hope you all agree. And like I said earlier, we are doing a giveaway for one of these rings. So we're partnering up with the Waterjet channel to give away not this exact ring, but I'll be making them an identical one in the size of the winner. We didn't want to give away this ring because if it's not your size, you can't really do anything with it. So there's a link to that down in the description. Also be sure to check out the Waterjet channel's video on this. And if you're wondering, at least for now, I'm not having these available on my website. Mammoth Tooth is a little bit tricky to get a hold of. I'm sure I could get a decent amount if I needed to, but it's also just such a difficult material to work with and keep it intact and all of that. But what we are doing is we actually went and we made a glowstone ring using this mammoth tooth inlaid into it. So we do have a mammoth tooth ring available on the website and it's actually really cool. I like the way it turned out. It's a tungsten ring with a white glow inlay and then just a whole bunch of mammoth tooth pieces inlaid in there. So it turned out to look really nice and sharp and it glows in the dark. So if you're interested in any of those things, all of those links are down in the description. I wanna thank you all so much for watching. You can subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this. And I also have an Instagram account where you can follow me. I kind of post some behind the scenes stuff there as well as just a bunch of other ring photos. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.